Jack Griffin, you are truly uh, America's cup expert. What do you think about the next cup in Bermuda? It's going to be a fantastic event. You know, that's the that's the easy answer. Bermuda is beautiful. Uh, the conditions will be great for these boats, flat water in a protected area. It's going to be really dependent upon the sailors to a much greater extent than America's Cups have been in the past because the boats are mostly one design. The hulls, the wing, the cross beams are all one design. So the only thing that the engineer, I say the only thing, the things that the engineers and designers are working on are the hydrofoils and rudders and the control systems for everything and a little bit of aerodynamic fairing. But the control systems are going to be really huge and for the sailors to learn how to sail the boats will be really important because they're going to be very complex systems and there's only a crew of six. So you've got the helmsman, you've got the wing trimmer and you've got four guys to turn the handles on the, on the grinding pedestals and generate the oil pressure that they need for the hydraulic system to trim the wing, raise and lower the dagger boards, adjust the rake and the cant of the dagger boards and do this all, oh, about every 90 seconds because the race course is so short that they're gonna have to be, and so narrow, that they're gonna have to be making a maneuver probably every 90 seconds to two minutes. Do you think it will be a walkover for Oracle to win again? Well, first of all, it wasn't a walk over the last time okay. because they were down one to eight and it was a major comeback. Now, in after race 12, from the race 13 onwards, Oracle never lost another race. So the second half was a walk over for Oracle. Um, but no, I don't think it'll be a walk over because I think that there's going to be so much opportunity. Frankly, if you make any mistake and you drop down off of the foils, if the other boat manages to stay up on the foils, they're going to immediately get a couple hundred meters gain on you. So I think it's going to be really dependent upon the sailors, and I think that with the one design nature of this, it's going to be very, very difficult for the design teams to give the sailors uh, an unfair advantage by having a much faster boat. This time the, the event will only, only go over five weeks. Why that? Uh... You know, it's look at the Olympics, look at the World Cup, these events don't stretch on for months. Now, if you, you can talk about having a regular season, like in, say, the champ, uh, the, um, uh, the, the any of the football leagues, the Bundesliga in Germany or the Serie A in Italy, you know, it goes on for a whole season, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about an event that starts in the middle of May, towards the end of May 2017, with the round robins of what used to be called the Louis Vuitton Cup. With the big change of this time, the Defender will be sailing in the round robin. And then they go into the semifinals and the finals of the Louis Vuitton Cup to decide who will be the challenger that goes up against Oracle in the America's Cup match. But that all runs together. So starting from May 27th, 2017, right through to June 27th, um, 2017, that's going to be the whole package. And it's going to be really exciting. And you have some uh, newsletter from your Cup Experience, is that right? Yeah, my website is cupexperience.com and I publish a newsletter that really explains a lot of the details, both about how the boats are working, what the teams are doing to get ready for the next America's Cup, but I also explain things like the schedule. People don't really understand the schedule. Right now we're in the America's Cup World Series. That series goes on over two years. 2015 and 2016. It's sailed in one design boats, strict one design AC45F, F for foiling, and at the end of the two years, the scores will be totaled up for all the regattas over that time.